this set of notes, I'm going to be going over the cellular division process known as meiosis. So the outline for today's notes starts with mitosis versus meiosis. So it is important that before you start these notes, you have an understanding of mitosis. There is a lot of vocabulary and processes that I'm not going to review in meiosis because they are outlined in the mitosis notes. The next part will be an overview of the chromosomes, what haploid versus diploid means, and then I will go through the various stages of meiosis and what is occurring in each stage. You can pause at each slide and fill in the guided notes found in the description below, or you can watch the video straight through to get a better understanding of meiosis. So the cell cycle is a process that cells go through when they're going to divide. There's two different types of processes that we can go through within the cell cycle. The cell cycle for both of these will start with interphase, and then we will go into the M phase. For a body cell, we will go through mitosis. This results in two identical diploid cells. And I'm going to review what that means in the following slides. We use mitosis for growth and repair to make these body cells as we get larger, as we grow up, and for any injuries we have to replace skin or blood that may be lost, along with other things that could be injured. Meiosis also happens after interphase but is specific to sex cells, which we call gametes. We have the sperm and the ovum, or the egg. These are the sex cells that would be in a living organism. This process results in four genetically different haploid cells. And again, I'll review what haploid means in the following slides. But you can see that at the end of meiosis, we do not want cells to look the same, while in mitosis, we do. Meiosis is necessary for sexual reproduction uh, to create offspring. So any organism that sexually reproduces needs to go through meiosis in order to reproduce offspring. These next slides, there's nothing to fill in in the guided notes. This is a concept that's really difficult in terms of better understanding what's going on in meiosis. And so I just wanted to take some time to explain it so that it makes sense further on when we go over the stages. So in interphase, there's a step called S phase. S stands for synthesis. That is because we are synthesizing a copy of DNA. We are doing DNA replication. So in this example, I'm going to be using human cells. Human cells have 46 chromosomes. All of your body cells have 46 chromosomes. However, you inherited 23 of those chromosomes from dad and 23 of those chromosomes from mom. So there are 23 pairs of chromosomes. So you will have a chromosome that codes for genetic information from dad and that same genetic information from mom. And these pairs are what give us our genetics. When we undergo the S phase during interphase, we duplicate all of the DNA, which is why we represent it with this X shape. This chromosome has been duplicated. That's why there's two of them now instead of one. However, scientists call this X a chromosome and this single one a chromosome. So it can get a little tricky. Half of a duplicated chromosome is called a chromatid. So there's actually 92 chromatids, 46 chromosomes stays the same as we see here, but we really doubled the amount of genetic information. 
So you can see here that in mitosis, after interphase, I'll enter mitosis, and at the end, I will get two daughter cells. These daughter cells still have 46 chromosomes with 23 pairs, 23 of the dad's chromosomes and 23 of the mom's chromosomes within your body cell. This is why it is called diploid. We still have two sets of the DNA. That's what the dye is for, having two. And then our other daughter cell will look the same. You will notice that these two look the same as each other, and they look the same as the chromosomes I had on the previous screen. We have identical diploid cells. Meiosis is going to be a little different. In interphase, we have duplicated the DNA, hence the 92 chromatids. However, at the end, we have four daughter cells. And you'll notice that I don't have pairs anymore. I have 23 chromosomes, half of the starting number, which was 46. And each cell has 23. We divided this 92 by 4, giving us half the original number pre-interphase. That's why it's haploid. We have half the number of cells. You'll also notice that these cells do not look like each other, nor do they look like the starting we had on the first slide. So we're going to go over the stages of meiosis of how we get to this end result. So it's important that we recognize those words diploid and haploid and our understanding of the chromosomes. It is a very tricky concept to understand. So if you need to rewatch that part of the video or even use another source to better understand it, I highly recommend to do that because it does take a little bit of time to really understand chromosomes going to chromosomes with chromatids to more chromosomes. So I hope that I explained it in a way that will help you understand the stages. So if you're filling in the guided notes, we're going to go back to filling in the blanks. So the stages of meiosis have the same names as mitosis, but we are going to go through all the stages twice. So we number them for the first time we go through those stages and then the second time. So we start with prophase one. The nuclear membrane of our nucleus is going to disintegrate and start to fall apart. The nucleolus will disappear. That's our dark center of the nucleus will no longer be visible. And those chromosomes that we were just talking about are going to become visible as the DNA condenses tighter and tighter forming these chromosomes. Then we're going to have something unique to meiosis occur synapsis and crossing over. So in your cells, since we are sexually reproducing organisms, we have DNA from mother and from father. These chromosomes are going to code for different genes because the DNA has all of your information. So this chromosome could be about your height, your feet size, and your nose shape. Could all be the genes on these two chromosomes. Over here, we see the genes are include eye color. So maybe eye color, hair color, if you have freckles or not, are on these chromosomes. So in synapsis, what we do is we take the chromosomes that are coding for the same genetics and pair them together. And these chromosomes will be the same size and line up with each other. That's why I have various sizes represented here. So you would want your foot size chromosome from dad and your foot size chromosome from mom to pair up. And you would want the eye color chromosome from dad and mom to pair up. You would not want the partners to be wrong. That could cause some problems. So synapsis is the chromosomes finding their partner and forming a tetrad, meaning that those chromosomes have now come together. After they have performed synapsis, they will do uh, a phenomenon called crossing over. So now these homologous chromosome pairs are gonna wrap around each other 
and actually exchange sections of the chromatids to get this new genetic combination. So we're breaking off pieces of the DNA and recombining it into different DNA. So you can see here that these homologous chromosomes crossed over, wound around each other, and now this chromosome that was inherited from the father has a small section from the mother and vice versa here. And this is gonna give us genetic diversity because the person that receives this chromatid is going to be different than the person that receives this chromatid, even though it's from the same starting cell and from the same starting organism. So in this way, we're gonna create different genetic combinations. And this is why at the end of meiosis, all of the chromosomes look different from each other in each of the four cells. The good news is the remaining stages are pretty similar to mitosis and there shouldn't be any other new crazy concepts. In metaphase one, those homologous chromosome pairs are gonna line up down the equator of the cell. Remember, meta for middle. Those chromosomes are in the middle of the cell and they're gonna be in their partners. They're gonna line up according to the law of independent assortment. This means they line up at random. It means that you don't have to have all these blue father inherited chromosomes on one side. You don't have to have the mother inherited chromosomes on one side. You could have them flip-flopped. You could have it more on one side, more on the other for whether it's mother inherited or father inherited. They're going to line up randomly. As long as they're in their homologous pairs, the order of the lineup and what side they're on doesn't matter. And this is also going to contribute to this genetic diversity. After they're lined up in metaphase, we enter anaphase one. Those homologous chromosomes are pulled apart and they separate. They're going to go to the opposite ends of the cell. And then we enter telophase one. The chromosomes have reached the opposite ends of the cell, and so the new nuclei will start to form. To end the cell cycle, we would go into cytokinesis. However, we don't want cells that have the full amount of DNA. And right now, even though these cells are genetically different, they still have 46 chromosomes. We need to get them to haploid, to half. So we're going to jump right in to the second stage of meiosis, or meiosis two. So we go into prophase two. The good news about prophase two is that we are not doing anything fancy. There is no crossing over, no synapsis, and there will be no more duplicating of DNA. The DNA you ended with in telophase one is the amount of DNA you start with in prophase two. So the chromosomes, if they've loosened up a little bit, will start to condense. Those nuclear membranes we just formed will start to disintegrate again, and we're kind of restarting this process. However, you'll notice we are now doing the process in two cells at one time, as opposed to one cell. In metaphase two, those chromosomes will line up down the equator of each cell. Just like metaphase one, we're making that line at the equator. The law of independent assortment does not um, apply to this one because we're not in the pairs. Then anaphase two, those chromosomes will be separated and pulled to the opposite ends of the cell. And in telophase two, we reach those opposite ends and start to form four new nuclei. Cytokinesis will officially end the cell cycle with four genetically unique haploid cells. You can see on the screen here that none of the chromosomes are exactly the same in these four cells. So through the process of meiosis, sexual reproduction is possible, and it results in offsprings being genetically diverse, which I represented here with different colors. 
you can have four different sperm cells, gametes, and they're genetically different from each other because we've crossed over, mixed that DNA a little bit, and we're going to have some, some different traits. And the same with another person who has meiosis to form the egg, has four different eggs that are genetically unique from each other. So if siblings have the same parents, they're going to have features that look like mom and features that look like dad, but they're not gonna be identical to each other or to their parents because we've mixed up the DNA a little bit. You're going to have a mixture of DNA from both parents and you're going to have their DNA mixed up as well. Now, identical twins are a different story because they come from one egg and one sperm that has split and makes identical. But for other siblings, we have this genetic diversity and it gives us genetic diversity of life. So I hope that gave you a better understanding of the process of meiosis and how we go through those changes with our chromosomes. If you have any questions or would like me to go in further detail on this topic or another one, please let me know in the comments and I hope you enjoyed.